There was a time in America When kids were simply kids We didn't need sex education Grace Ferranti, Caring About People with my editorial op. I have a fantastic show for you today. Something where we're going to talk and, and, and really enjoy the different diversities that are in our borough and around this country and around New York. Okay. Uh, back again, we have Aubrey Padmore, who you know from, is from the Caribbean or South Jamaica, Queens, or South. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tease him. He's from Barbados. Okay. And we have Rodney Smith. Uh, who's a cinematographer director okay from Barbados yeah, that's correct. okay and our uh, in-house curmudgeon Tony Vicari who does our political satire from South Brooklyn <laughs> we're going to talk today about uh, the second component of about books okay and people that are working and writing stories and all the things that I know that you've been enjoying and seeing and these are new books that are coming up but I wanted you to also meet someone who's in the film industry or who's in, worked his way through the industry and brought himself up the way he enjoys to do it. It's his thing. It's something he enjoys doing. So let's talk a little bit first to uh, Rodney Smith, a cinematographer. Welcome to my show, Rodney. Thank you for having me. Okay. Uh, how many years are you here in, the, in, the, in New York? Um, in Europe, I've been here for uh, two years now, but in the United States, I've been here for 10 years. Okay. Did you start film producing when you first came, or was it something else you were doing before that? It was something else. I was still um, working on screen on screenplays, so it took me uh, about three years before I got into film production. Tell me a little bit about your writing. Uh, my, my writing is um, pretty much my heart and soul. I, I would say that uh, it's the one thing that I really believe in, just having a good solid story. So we try to take uh, stories from different perspectives and, uh, and just put a good spin on it. Okay. Uh, tell us about uh, your, the new, uh, you're having, a, uh, you're a writer, producer, okay, and you have a new production coming up, don't you? Ah, uh, yes, we've been working on a web series called Dominion. Um, it's, a, it's a supernatural detective noir. Um, we're trying to, for the detective noir style, um, where uh, a, a detective gets uh, sucked into the world of the supernatural through one of his newest clients. She um, she hires him to find a missing person, but as he investigates, he finds out that there are more supernatural elements involved. So this is something new for you. Have always been that was the direction you when you first started to write about this was the supernatural or was it more? They have usually been supernatural elements present. Um, we like I said tried to take out a different. Um, a different route on, on the story. So uh, we go quirky, but um, there's, you know, we just try to get some bits of reality in, in, in the quirkiness, and there have always been supernatural elements. Okay. I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to Aubrey, who's supernatural himself all together. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> well, I mean, what have you been doing? What's happening this week? Man, there are a lot of things that have been happening. Um, actually, we started out um, revamping the show that we're going to be doing, um, Editorial Opinion, 8.30 um, Eastern on Fridays on Car Voice Radio, also integrating what we're doing here in the studio on, for the, 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 on for the TV, sh I mean the radio show. And i um, been publishing and getting ready for the free magazine that we're doing, which chronicles um, In The Zone magazine, which chronicles everything we do on Carb Voice Radio, including our community exposure and so on. Can you tell us a little bit what's inside there? Well, um, we actually, um, I met Rodney at what is considered the first New York-based um, web series um, meetup at Borders a couple of weeks ago. And... Um, it actually, I got uh, actually excited when I watched his sh series Dominion. Um, I found it to be very professional, very um, state-of-the-art filmmaking, and I said something like this is on the internet, if there are a bunch of guys doing this or a group of people doing this, I want to be in there. So when I came back in from Atlanta, I went to the meeting and found 25 producers who are doing web-based television from in different, different categories, different aspects. So um, that's in here. They're talking a little bit about the meetup and what it takes to make a great web series. It's not off, uh, something off the top of your head. There are actually guidelines and ideas that you have to utilize um, in order to get your, your web series up and going. 
We've all, we also have in the magazine um, some stuff that's happening with the Labor Day Parade coming up um, this weekend on right. in Eastern Parkway. You know, that's the second largest thing that happened in America. Right, over a million, over a million people show over up. Over a there. million people on Eastern Parkway coming up Labor Day. Remember my, we would said that we would like to do something here soon. I'm hoping mm -hmm. we can bring something in October yeah. to Staten Island. Mm -hmm. uh, the taste of, uh, a taste of the Caribbean food, yeah, okay? Yeah. And I noticed in the magazine you have mm -hmm. somebody there that's, uh, who probably uh, we'd like to interview before our show. Uh, you know, there's a lot of Caribbean restaurants so all along Bay Street who give you back home cooking and, and, and really a good taste of what it is in the Caribbean and you would enjoy it. So we're going to try and bring and those Golden, tastes. Yeah. Golden Crust just moved to Staten Island in February. Right. I've been there a couple of times, accidentally ate. <laughs> accidentally <laughs> ate, yeah. Okay, sure. so I purposely <laughs> planned myself to go there to eat. The food is good. And yeah. um, they, they said to give them a shout out on the show. We told them what we were doing and, how, and what a great place Staten Island is. And I love Staten Island because Staten Island did a lot for me. It's the first place I bought my first home. Um, got to take the kids to the beach. You remember my kids, the crazy <laughs> ones that grew up. And um, that kind of stuff. So it's a great thing. Okay, we're going to come back to you again. I'm going to go back again. And we're going to talk to uh, Tony. Tony, what's, what's on your crew today about uh, what's happening on the political scene? I'm, uh, I'm very, very, very upset. And that's about it. Okay. <laughs> um, Rodney, okay, let's talk a little bit about um, storyboarding. A lot of people don't know what that is. And could you walk a, a, someone from the outside that what, what you do and how we put a production together? Well, it's kind of like uh, putting your story together in the form of a comic book. I'm sure a lot of us have seen comic books. But um, more importantly, it's just about um, showing all of the shots that you will need in order to get um, a, a good production. It, it, in most cases, it will it will cover um, the, your additional shots. And if you have your director, your cinematographer, and your editor in one place and or in one person like myself, then you're able to do a lot of pre-planning and say this shot isn't going to work or why isn't this shot working, and just just mess around with it until it finally works or lose it completely. You show the Dominion, okay, do you shoot outside or are you doing uh, sh shoots outside or is it all in-house? We are um, we're doing both indoor shots and outdoor shots. Okay, and give me a little bit of breakdown again. I know it's a detective and the supernatural, okay, and there's a girl involved, and okay. Uh, where is it really basically taking place? What's the format? Is it, is it Caribbean? Is it New York? Is it, you know? Well, it's taking place in Brooklyn. Okay. So the um, in, in Brooklyn and the sur in the surrounding area, the um, the actors are are actually Barbadian. My my lead actor, uh, one of my leads, um, my my Nicholson. She uh, she was the first one to be cast. Um, I worked with her on my film Mirror Mirror, and uh, she was that was pretty much her audition working on that film, and she was so good that I said you need to play Marco. And well, I was still looking for uh, Jeremiah, the, the lead character, and she sent me sent me this um, this guy, Sean uh, Michael Field. I I didn't know he he was at the time, so I contacted <coughs> him. He did an audition, and um, he was perfect for it. So I signed him on, and then I found out he was also a Barbadian. Ah. So it's um, it's just uh, everything coming together to make this kind of a Barbadian project. For our uh, students, we do have a student intern program here. Could you do a little bit and tell us about how you would break down a scheduling and your budget? Because that's an interesting thing that people don't realize that you have to do that. You have to be prepared. And ha There's the cost in film. There's a cost, you know, how do you do that? Well, um, it goes uh, most of the times according to availability of the actors or availability of locations. Now, if you can get everything uh, shot out of a location in, in one in one day or a couple of days, you don't have to go back to that location. So you schedule that location and the actors, and you, you just go to that one location, get everything shot up, move on to the next to the next location, and it's just just um, I did, looking through the script and identifying where those scenes happen. If one scene happens in script one and then it happens again over in script five, you have to really take a look and say how can we shoot this in one day so we can make the most of this because uh, 
while a lot of people will say, oh, cool, you're doing a film? Yes, you can use my location. The novelty of that wears off quickly after one day. I either the, either the, if they themselves um, lose a little bit of um, patience or the neighbors lose patience, and y you have to get yeah, out of the interference as far as they're concerned, you know, yeah. if you're there too long, well, you're treading on my, come visit, but don't stay, <laughs> stay, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm living the <laughs> Okay. So it just, you have to deal with those, those okay. I'm very happy to bring this story to you uh, about Rodney, is because we here at CTV are very proud to know that uh, we used to have a fantastic, a fantastic uh, program here at CTV called the Director's Chair. Now the director's chair was made by Kimber, and Kimber was someone who put all her heart and soul into bring the latest film producers, the latest directors, and it was a fantastic thing. And I was happy to report, which I am now in last year, that one of our directors last year, Lance, won the film uh, Staten Island Film Festival really? award, and it was supposed to go on to maybe Tribeca. So that started right here at a Staten Island, so any film director, I am more than welcome to. And uh, a shout out goes to Kimba and her director's chair, and hope to see you back soon. And of course, my uh, shout out goes to Kenny. We can't forget Kenny, because no. we're, we're not going anyplace. <laughs> wake, wake up, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> so remember the director's chair, and yes, he started here at CTV, and he's a director, and he's doing excellent. He's doing on, and he puts his pieces on. So. Yes, you can go from where you want to go to, to up to Tribeca. Let's be truthful. That's very, very good at film festivals. Yes, it it's is. great. Okay. Uh, let us tell, know a little bit about um, your partner, Andrew Stubbs. Andrew Stout. Stout. I keep getting it wrong. I'm sorry. Well, we've actually been working. Uh, we were best friends for the past, uh, I think, 20 years now, which is a long time. But um, we we have a similar mindset, and we are both creative per persons. So... He, he and I started writing short stories together. We'd partner up and just do a short story. And that eventually went into comic books where he would come up with a story and I'm, I'm the artist. So I would, I would draw it and get everything going. That eventually, over the years, led into doing films where, where, um, where he would do a story. Um, and I would say this would make an excellent film. So. You want to tell people how they can get in touch with you if they wanted to discuss with something with you about maybe uh, documenting their pieces or maybe uh, encouraging and helping you with other things? You want to s tell people in my audience how you, they can get in touch with you? Absolutely. My website is Flying Monkey Films. Uh, that's flyingmonkeyfilms.com. That's flyingmonkey.com. F L Y I N M O M O N K E Y. Right. <laughs> There's no G in there. Okay, and if they wanted to call you? Uh, you can reach me at 323-207-6664. Uh, okay. So uh, remember, if you want to have something uh, and sit and talk something with Rodney, okay, he has his new uh, show coming out, Dominions, okay, on the website, right? Is that where they see it? The, the Dominion series is actually dominionseries.com. It is, so it has its own. So it's dominionseries.com. And you and can put, join us on Facebook as well at uh, facebook.com slash dominionseries. So when does it come on, do you know? We are scheduled to, um, to go with the first season in, um, in October. All right, so we're going to be bringing it again, or we've got to bring it back up again yeah. so people will know? Yeah, well, actually, right now, um, there are a, a number of um, what I call minisodes um, on the website. We've filmed 12 of them. Um, and they're one-minute pieces, just uh, bite-sized bits of terror. Just to give them that little touch and what's coming, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's not what's coming. It's, uh, it's kind of more like it's setting up the entire world, but it gives a good, um, a good feel of the, of the level of you know, quality of production that we were, we're bringing. Excellent, excellent. Uh, we're going to talk again a little bit to Al Cremudgeon. Okay. You want to tell us about your book that you're hoping to get produced one day? Yes, it's called The Sci-Fi Window, and it's a basic book about what the guy next door would consider science fiction. Uh, science fiction, some of it today, gets so complicated with uh, death rays and stuff that you get lost. I'll give you an example. In one story, uh, this guy from another planet tries to land in, in, at one of the air bases, but he's having trouble landing. The reason he's having trouble landing is because the manual that he was going to use, he used for something else. He's come all the way from another planet and they forgot to pack toilet paper. 
This can give you an idea of what problems one would run into not having a manual. Uh, the other f stories are uh, similar. Somebody gets on a show with Jerry Springer. Two guys start to fight. He turns around and he says, let me hit him with my death ray. And he does, but it's live. And nobody, everybody starts to laugh because they don't realize he just executed two people. That's so how do they get your book if they wanted your book? If they want my book right now, they need to write to me at CTV, Tony Vicari, and I will send them a copy for a small fee. You can't charge a fee. I can't charge a no, fee? Charge then a don't call CTV. You're not getting a book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to come back again. Rodney. Okay. Scientific comedy. That's a new one for me. Mm -hmm. uh, unless the Mork and Mindy show has returned back. Uh, what else is going on with you? Well, speaking of books, we've got the Capital Book Fest coming up in Pennsylvania, and that's going to be September the 18th. Um, Which is next Saturday. What is next, sa next Saturday? Is, is it next Saturday? Not this Saturday coming up at the week. The, the week after that, yeah. yeah. And Yvette Maynard, um, who's also um, an author, right. and Life Without Limits, her book's been doing pretty good on Amazon and also um, in the bookstores in Barbados. And uh, she is going to be a part of a women's panel talking about publishing and authors along with Dr. Nia Davis Defoe and they're going to have a great time. The Capital Book Fest is in four different states but the first one begins in uh, Pennsylvania and the second one is at October the second in Largo, Maryland and then it goes into November and it's um, pretty well attended and um, you know there was a lot of trouble with like book publishing this year with Barnes and Noble going through some things and borders they're also supporting. They're coming out I heard maybe possibility they may be coming out. Yeah they're gonna be well, they, well they're usually a part of the event. Do you think we should have a copy of, or on our show and have a discussion and in the, the technical uh, aspect the fact that there are no I, I see people going more technical than they going reading and holding a book. And well, well we need that we need to definitely do a book show because like like everything that happens it's translatable. You can have a, a tech book, but it's, some people love to hold things in their hand. Mm -hmm. And for some people who have problems maybe reading or whatever, and, and it's just some, for a lot of people, it's an emotional thing to take a book and to do it like this, you know. By the way, I can't show you the author, but this is like a book on e-book e publishing, right? And this talks about that also, about having, having the, the, the flip and, and, and different things like that. Right. But I definitely think we should do a show about the, the benefits of um, e-publishing versus um, hard, hard book cover, soft book that's cover. That's an excellent thing. Excellent so thing. Uh, the thing that I kind of see that's a problem is a book in paper form is very, very enjoyable. But if you get on an airline with this pod, whatever it is, and mm -hmm. you, you're going to have the woman come down and say, excuse me, do you want to turn that off? <laughs> I mean, so now you, while you're in the air, you've got sections where, That's can, I, can I finish my book? You know, or do I have, well, we're landing, okay. Let me just get to the ending. You know what I mean? I can't go into electronic books. I got to have paper. Well, plus you got to have paper since they don't serve you no food anyway. You might want to have something to eat. But <laughs> <I just laughs> <have something. Right. laughs> okay, talking about women, uh, women uh, who wrote books, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, we had a nice show last week, and I'm very happy to bring it back again. Is uh, Number one, this is someone who's very, very active on the island, and she works for Janelle Hyatt Spencer. Her name is Ann Clinton. And Ann Clinton, who's a grandmother who enjoyed her grandchild so much, wrote a cute little book called Stevie Inchworm, mm -hmm. okay? And Stevie Inchworm uh, by Ann Clinton, okay, is a book about teaching children how to be uh, more progressive within themselves and not to be afraid of the dark or not be afraid of, of dragons and stuff like that and let them see that the dragon was always there but it's, it was in a different light, okay? Mm -hmm. And that the, the power is within them. Mm -hmm to make a dragon go away. So I think that's very interesting. This is one book written by uh, Ann Clinton, Stevie Inchworm. The other one is by Paula Davies. Now Paula Sumatra, S-C-I-M-E-C-A-R-N-M-S, okay? On becoming a nurse, bypassing the hidden chemical dependency trap. This is a book about a, a woman where she was an RN who worked triple and double hours, worked extra time, overtime, uh, who had to rely on supportive drugs and got into a drug habit and d had checking it off, okay? The nurse undergoes the lengthy process of becoming a nurse, ever contemplating that 
they will submit to a hidden trap which jeopardizes their health, which means that they say, oh, okay, I'll just give me something to keep staying me awake, or I'll just keep me something to make sure I can go home and feed my kids and they get safe on the bus and stuff like this. This is an interesting, interesting book, okay? She's an educator, uh, a working nurse, a mentor, uh, resorts to terminate a nurse sponsors a new... This is important that you find out that some of the people working in hospitals today also are human beings too. They are not gods. Yep, yep. Okay. There's one thing I wanted to mention. One of the stories that I have is about a spaceman that comes to this planet with a wonder drug, a drug that will stop pain all over the world and will make people feel better. It's called Oxycontin, but he has a problem selling it on a street corner because he keeps getting busted. <laughs> I have another book which I've really uh, enjoyed last year, and it was so close to my home, okay? This is a woman who lost her child, who was only a young child, mm -hmm. okay? And the truth is, I lost my child, okay? It never, ever goes away. So she wrote this book to comfort herself, to comfort her husband, to comfort her other children, and she realized that you don't have to put someone who's passed away away. You can leave them with you, and you can enjoy them every day, and they're there. And this, I want to read to you. It's by Mickey Peloso, Peloso, P-E-L-U-S-O, and it's called And the Wimper Will Sang. It's about her little, little daughter that was passed away by drunk driving. Okay, I just want to give you a little bit of something about this. Okay, the author's note, which is herself, Mickey. Each year, the lives of children, teenagers, and young adults are lost through alcohol and drug-related deaths, most often by drunk drivers. Each one of them was a special child to those who loved them and to society at large. Each one deserves to be remembered. This book was written for each and every one of them. This is from her father, Noel. That was the name of the little girl that passed. You are the glitter in our eyes, the foil to our temper, and the giggle to our tension. You were the thread that ran through our family and drew it together. Noel, your voice was the firebrand of consciousness and in, in class of convention. When a new school rule forbade smoking or swearing or near the school grounds, you erupted in an umbrage. You neither smoke nor swear but deny the school's right to manage your, your morals. You are forever in my heart. A little girl who stood up even then, and her mother wrote this book to say, every day someone drunk driving, and as you know, in this borough, we've been losing a lot of our teenagers, and every once in a while, I repeatedly come to you and say, please, it's your car, you check. Make sure if they're caught drunk, take the keys away. You have a right, you're the parent. I know you may not want to hear this, but please try and understand. They are precious, and they don't come back, and you never, ever, ever forget them. Orby, what else is doing to you? Well, I'm kind of excited about a couple of things. I noticed that he's wearing his, bas his um, Jamaican <laughs> baseball T-shirt, and I'm wearing mine. But, but his looks better than me. I don't understand mine. He yeah. paid more for that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> And, and, and I just checked out um, Staten Island uh, newspaper, and I see that there's a new generation of cricketers in the pipeline on Staten Island. I was really impressed the last time. I, I thought it was a joke the first time I went to the community board to meeting, and the guy got him and said, we want to play football. How come they got a cricket pitch? What right. is that? In the ball field. And I was like, you're kidding, right? And he says, no, I'm not kidding. They come in to play cricket, and we can't play a <laughs> football. I'm like, well, why don't we share it? <laughs> okay. Right? So I'm seeing here that the Staten Island uh, Cricket Club Walk e program apart. in mm -hmm. Walker Park is developing new players with an eye towards raising sports visibility, and a lot of youth are involved. So this is a great thing for Staten Island. And, of course, now we can have two, we can have the best of two worlds. We can have kids in Staten Island, right, who play bas baseball and cricket going to the Caribbean to have fun doing both games and hit each one teach one, pushing one. And then join. With In other words, our little league can go to Barbados, right? Yeah. And then the children from Barbados can come to Staten Island. Yeah. I well, think the one thing you got to understand how dangerous, <laughs> how very dangerous Jamaican baseball yeah. is. 
Jamaican baseball. <laughs> if you go around first base and you want to go to second, you got to carry a palm tree, a full-grown <laughs> palm tree with you. When you're around second, go into third, you got to have two palm trees. When you get to third base, rounding third, going home, is where the danger begins. The opposite team pulls out a 60-millimeter cannon and starts firing as you're going down the line. <laughs> the game is excellent, only there hasn't been a score in quite a number of years. So, um, did, did, you take, did you take his palm tree from the No, he, he took more. He's losing more than his palm. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's losing more than his palm. <laughs> All right. Remember now, uh, the 350th anniversary is coming up, and I keep telling you about it. And I'm saying to you, if you have something uh, very archaic in, in the borough that maybe something from the turn of the century, or maybe your grandmother left you or something like that, and you want to share with the 350th anniversary, or maybe there's something you'd like to talk about, maybe uh, a hospital that you worked in years ago, or maybe a job that you had years ago, or the fact that there was a farm years ago, okay? Mm -hmm. And you may have some memorabilia or something in your house from the turn of the century. Please remember we're 350 years old, okay? And I'd like to see if we can do something and celebrate it. So please call us here at CTV, Grace Ferranti, 100 Cable Way, Staten Island, New York, 10303. Or give me a call, 718-727-1414. If you have something to say and you want to say it, bring it here. If you don't like what I have to say or how I say it, turn me off. That's my way of saying let me hear from you. Enjoy. Enjoy what's out there and enjoy this borough because it's the smallest borough with the biggest heart. I want to thank my guests and each and every one of them. I want to thank Rodney again. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Well, thank you Kay. for inviting me. When you have another project, can you please come back and, then, and share it with us, and we'll put it on the, uh, I'd love to. Absolutely. Well, Dominion is going on for a while, so. <laughs> okay. Come back and let me know. Well, at least bring me maybe a, a, a Roland. I'd love to put a piece of your uh, stuff on the air. It's a Roland. Yeah. Would awesome. you like to do that? That would be great. Okay. Of course, our local curmudgeon up against the political system feels there should be what? No Jamaican baseball. <laughs> <laughs> He's against Jamaican baseball this week. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> I don't have a palm tree. It's a <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Quickly, 900 kids were part of the first baseball camp in Jamaica uh, two months ago. Excellent. 900 kids. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the weekends coming up. As you know, the, Car uh, the Caribbean holidays coming. Yeah. Where is it located again? Eastern Parkway, Labor Day. Okay. The the, the Labor Day Parade in Eastern Parkway. There's going to be a lot of people get up there early. It starts on one side of uh, Eastern Parkway and goes all the way to the other end. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to showcase everything. And you're bringing in October. What are we and doing in, in, here? in October, we're going to have a taste of the a Caribbean. Little taste a little of the bit Caribbean. of everything. M music, music, artists, dancers. And, and we're going to do it all in the studio as a special so that people can get a sense of what's happening in the Caribbean. This is Grace Ferranti, caring about people, editorial op, thanking Kenny Graham. Okay, Kimbra, our curmudgeon Tony Vicari, Rodney, thank you so much again, and Aubrey, you're unbelievable. You're like a, what could I tell you? This is Grace Ferranti, caring about people. Thank you. We didn't need sex education, carry guns in violation of all.